Welcome to Social Ella Ministries, where we set the captives free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope this message turns out well. In James 4, verse, verse 7, it is written, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It's so simple. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. In Luke 4, when the devil tried tempting Jesus, you see the devil basically coming in three times and the Lord responded with the scriptures. And yes, the Lord was fasting. It was like after three attacks and then it was over. And it says, when the devil had finished every temptation, he left him until an opportune time. This message is for those of you who are struggling and you're at a point where you're internalizing things because it makes it seem so simple. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And you're wondering, and maybe you can ask the Lord. Actually, you've asked the Lord multiple times. If there's an area in your life where you have not submitted to him, because if there's some kind of loophole where you have not submitted to him, and it's making your resistance against the devil futile, then you want to know. And like Job, you're clueless regarding what's going on. And you've been doing some quote-unquote soul searching. What have I done? Or what didn't I do? What did I do to deserve this? Is the Lord angry with me? Does the Lord love me? And some of you, you're like, I know I've done everything the Lord has asked me to do and more. Then why does it seem as if my resistance to the devil is futile? How is it I keep on submitting? I keep on resisting. But the devil is not fleeing. How am I supposed to resist the devil well when I go to sleep things happen to me that I don't understand can't defend and sometimes can't even remember how's it hear about other people they're rebuking stuff in dreams they're fighting battles and winning or when they win it ends but for me it continues how's it people are having dreams about angels showing up to their assistance but for me, I'm oftentimes outnumbered and outgunned. And being tempted so many times that despite scripture saying that God will never leave or forsake us, I want to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What have I done to you to deserve this? How can I resist if the one I'm resisting is over me. Like Potiphar's wife with Joseph, where he did submit to God. He did resist. That devil didn't flee, but he flee from the, fled from the devil and he still got in trouble. Elijah, he submitted to God. He did everything he needed to do. But Jezebel kept coming unrelentingly. Where did I go wrong? I can't sleep in peace. I can't escape because that person is in a position over me. Hmm. I like Joseph. Sometimes the ones who are against me are my very household. How is it I have submitted to God? I've been resisting the devil to the best of my ability, but the devil 
has not left. If he leaves, like it's written here, that when the devil had finished every temptation, he left him until an opportune time. How's it devil on flees from me? Not like he's running for his life, but it's like he's going to recharge, get some help, and he'll be back before morning light. Why am I going through this? How's it I hear of others going through stuff and the Lord sends an angel, a prophet, or maybe he speaks to the person himself to let them know what is going on and what they need to do is get free. How's it like Joseph? I'm in this bondage. I've been faithfully serving from the pit. I see others going free, but not me. How's it? I'm in the lion's den like Daniel, or rather than the lion's mouth being bound up. I'm full of scars. Where did I go wrong? Did I not submit to you, the Most High God? And there are many things the devil could say. He participated, but it was against my will. The many things the devil could say, she participated, but it was against my will. So how can I resist the devil when it seems as if my resistance is futile? And the question is, how much longer, my Lord? There's also this question, my Lord. Will our relationship ever recover from this time? Because there are times when I feel like the concubine in Judges 19, her own husband put her out there to be abused. I've submitted to you and I've resisted the devil as best that I can. So why is the devil not fleeing from me? It's funny. We know about Job's story and why it happened to him. When the Lord rebuked Job, the Lord didn't say, Look, Job, you are a righteous man, and I knew you could take it. So I allowed the devil to afflict you, not only once, but twice. Because I knew that no matter what I allowed him to do, and I only allowed him to go so far and do so much, that you would not deny my name. That even if you would hate life itself, you would not deny my name. That is not the Lord's response. For some of you, it would be nice if the Lord told you beforehand. Maybe he did something like David and let you know, this is my judgment against you. Maybe like the Israelites, when they were supposed to go into the promised land, and because of that, he told them they were going to be in the wilderness for 40 years. Or like Peter, where Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, to sift you as wheat. But I've prayed that your faith fail you not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brothers. You'd be nice if you knew beforehand. And in your struggles, there are times when you've sought others and they had no understanding. Because like Job's friends, they too accuse you of some kind of unrighteousness. You didn't submit to the Lord and you have not been resisting the devil. And the things that have been happening to you, oh no, that's from your flesh. And when you search the scriptures, therefore mention Luke 4, who was it that told Jesus, if you are the Son of Man or the Son of God, turn the stone to bread? Jesus had not eaten in 40 days. Was it his flesh speaking or was it the devil? And many people are blind to the fact that what you've been going through is not coming from you, it's coming from another. And some do not understand this part, that God himself 
has allowed it. So why has the devil remained? Why hasn't he fled? Did you not submit to God? Have you not been resisting him? Have you not been fasting, praying, and doing all the other stuff that may be untold? Remember, no matter what Joseph did, the only person that was going to get him out of prison was the Lord in his timing. No matter what Abraham did, the only person who was going to give him a child of promise was the Lord in his timing. So for those of you who can relate to the things that I stated before, in fact, you may have gotten to this point where the most angry you've ever been has not been with another human being and it's not been with the devil. It's been with the Lord himself. And your anger was such that if you could have gone up to heaven, you'd have told every holy angel to get out of your way because you have business with the Lord. That's kind of heat in a sense you're packing at the moment. Because if those holy angels were not helping you in your moment of desperation, it's like, get out of my way. Or maybe you don't understand that. But I pray they understand this. Beloved, and by the way, this is um, 1 Peter 4, start verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share in the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also at the revelation of his glory you may rejoice with exultation. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Make sure that none of you suffer as a murderer or thief or evildoer or a troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed, but is to glorify God in this name. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is with difficulty that the righteous is saved, what will become of, godless, of the godless man and the sinner? Therefore, those also who suffer according to the will of God, shall entrust their souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right. So maybe you have submitted to the Lord and you're submitting to him right now in ways that you don't understand or realize because it is actually his will for you to suffer. For some, for a season, or for a reason, or a lifetime. The Apostle Paul had a messenger of Satan who was there tormenting him. And he asked the Lord to remove it from him three times. But the Lord said, My grace is sufficient for thee. And for each person, it requires an individual move, an individual act of God to let you know. And when you're going through a test, as it is oftentimes been said, the teacher is oftentimes silent. And the teacher can be silent because you are fully equipped to endure the test. And at the end, the teacher will let you know how you have done. And prayerfully, Joseph's brothers who came against him and they thought they were destroying him and his God-ordained destiny and everything they did propelled Joseph into his destiny. 
and it came a point where he had authority over them. Their lives were in his, in his hands. And they were afraid of him in, in Genesis 50, start verse 19. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in God's place? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it, but God meant it for good, in order to bring about this present result, to preserve or to save many people alive. Joseph had mercy upon those who persecuted him. We don't know what happened to Potiphar's wife, but prayerfully, when Joseph was made the governor of Egypt, that she even heard the name Joseph, that she shuddered. If she heard that Joseph was coming, she went and hid. And not necessarily that Joseph was going to do anything to her, but to not show her face to Joseph again. What she did was wicked. But in all this, it is important to forgive. And this may sound strange, but sometimes a person to forgive is the Lord. It'd be so easy if you told it beforehand, but sometimes you just don't know. And that's what makes things worse. You know the cartoon, G.I. Joe, now you know, and knowing is half the battle. And I pray that maybe throughout this message, that if you know you've submitted to the Lord, and you've been resisting the devil, and he's not fleeing, then you're in a fire trial, a test, one the Lord God is allowing. But every trial has an expiration date, and every promise of God has an appointment date. And if any human being is a part of this process, prayerfully, they will repent, because it is a fearful thing, a terrible thing, to fall into the hands of the true and the living God. And if you suffer, suffer directly at the hands of demons, their judgment has already been set, and they will suffer in the lake of fire and brimstone forever and ever. The Lord loves justice. He loves justice and righteousness. And in the end, those who are not with him, those who are against him, will find what it's like to have the true and living God against them. So by all means, submit to God and continue resisting the devil. And in the Lord's time, in his way, he will bring it to an end. God bless you, and Jesus the Christ is Lord. I'm back. I need to clarify something real quick. When I recorded the message a while ago, I spoke about forgiving God. And some people may look at that as being blasphemous. Who are we to forgive God? But there's a, a principle behind it. It's not that God needs your forgiveness. A part of it is releasing any kind of bad feelings you have, even towards the Lord, to include for things that you don't understand. In Matthew 5, storm verse 23, the Lord said, Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, not even you having something against him, but him having something against you, Leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering. Some people are angry with the Lord. 
and understandably so. But they're angry with the Lord, and at the same time they're trying to worship Him. It doesn't work that well. And any kind of ill will you have towards the Lord, it has to be dealt with. And one of the things about you forgiving the Lord, if it doesn't happen at the moment, at some point in time, you're going to be crying out to the Lord and asking Him to forgive you. Job, when the Lord finally spoke with him, he started saying, no one can thwart the Lord's plans. And he started repenting. And also I'll say this. I can understand what you're going through. Whatever it is, I can empathize. And apart also me coming back, in recent videos, you may have noticed in parentheses, eight, seven, six, four, four. Today's March, was it March 7th or 8th? It's around that time. But the Lord called me to serve him around this time of year, nine years ago. And I've gone through a lot of hell. I won't go into details. But in the Bible, the individual such as Moses, he was in the wilderness tending flock for 40 years before the Lord called him to serve him. The Apostle Paul, after the Lord called him, he wrote about spending 14 years in Arabia. Joseph spent about 13 years in prison. David spent many years waiting to become a king. It's what some people call a willingness, being in the cave. Well, in the last nine years, when you add the years and the months, the eight, seven, six, four, four, totals a thought totals 30 years of hell for me. The Lord told me many years ago that he'll restore unto me all the years the locust has eaten. And by my count, 30 years. 30 years. So I'm going to details regarding what happened or what events I'm counting but a total of 30 years. I served in the military. And a lot of times with military training, like my first time, <laughs> I won't share that. But in the military, there are some jobs that have a civilian equivalence. But if a civilian equivalent may involve a year of training, the military may complete the training in six to eight months and everything is condensed. And that's the way the Lord has been dealing with me. A lot of stuff has been condensed in nine years. But in nine years, the Lord has been able to squeeze in 30 years of hell. 30 years of hell. So whatever it is you've been going through, I understand. So you're not the only one going through a fiery trial. I think this concludes the message for real this time. So again, God bless you and Jesus the Christ is Lord.